spending some time in the wilderness, the cybersecurity cohort has been making a comeback. If this past election season has shown us anything, it's that anybody's emails can be hacked. And just today, we learned about a huge data breach in an adult dating website. Emphasis on adult, potentially exposing information on more than 400 million users worldwide. In short, the focus is back on protecting your data. And right now, the hottest stock in the group is CyberArk Software. You know this one from coming on the show, CYBR, the Israeli cybersecurity company that helps companies protect what are known as administrator accounts or privileged accounts. These are among the most common targets for hackers because if you can log into a network as an administrator, you've basically got the keys to the kingdom. Now, CyberArk blew away the numbers when it reported a week and a half ago. The company delivered a terrific 10 cent earnings beat off of a 23 cent basis, higher than expected revenues that grew at 37% clip year over year, and strong guidance. The stock jumped from just under $45 to up to $47.80 on the news. That was 6% gain. Since then, it's continued to climb. So, can CyberArk keep roaring? Let's take a closer look with Woody McCotty. He is the founder, chairman, and CEO of CyberArk Software. Find out more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. McCotty, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Eddie. Have a seat. Thank you. All right. Now, we know that this is a presidential election. All we ever did was hear server, 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 server. But the truth is, it's finally starting to dawn on people, right, that your server is just, you put it in there, unless you have protection, everybody's going to see what you wrote. Anything that's connected to the Internet Anything. can be hackable. Anything that's connected to the Internet can be hackable. You know that we had Harmon. Uh, Harman Industries, which just sold fabulous bid on by Dinesh Palawa, and he was talking about the notion that a driverless car hacked can be hacked easily. Is that the right stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just a matter of the, the amount of attempts. And now, now, one of the things that you've mentioned in your company, you said it's proven that attackers need administrative credentials in order to progress in the attack. How does an attacker get administrative credentials when it's so hard to get credentials when you work for a company? So they, they land on, a, on the inside, and from there they progress and they steal. They start with a regular user, and they look for footprints of an administrator that touched the system. Those are called hashes. They're like foot, footprints. And from them, they latch on to those administrative credentials to jump to another computer with more privileges, to another server with more privileges. So it's just like a, a Pac-Man, just looking at, at, at trails, and it doesn't matter where you start. It takes seven steps, 18 steps to get to administrative now, it seems like when they hire you, they're pre they're presuming they're being hacked. That's something new, right? Everyone's just presuming they're being hacked right now. That's the new approach. I, right. I think in, in the last couple of years, we've seen a change. It's called a post-breach uh, <laughs> proactive security measure. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming in ahead of time to help uh, secure against these advanced attacks, but we're seeing that the modern-day customer is thinking, okay, we, we will be breached. Let's make sure it's contained, that they won't be able to progress the attack. Now, what percent of, uh, of the big enterprise companies do you think have not addressed this issue? Uh, we feel it's a greenfield opportunity. We have 2,800 customers around the world. We, we're looking for the top 30, 40,000 customers to go after, and it's greenfield. When, when we land an account, we check, did they have anything in place? Sometimes they had something just for compliance sake, which is not yeah, that's what I'm. Okay, that's what I was getting at, which is that maybe something's happening. The New York State Department of Financial Services is now offering, saying, listen, no, it's not up to you anymore. That's what's happening, right? So compliance is a, is a, is a driver, but right. being compliant doesn't mean you're secure. Right. Uh, the security, security has to be based on, on risk uh, approach, a risk-based approach and looking at what, how are the attackers thinking, what are they going after, and not what is the auditor thinking and what is the auditor going after. What does it say that CyberArk's brought in for the U.S. Department of Defense? We don't comment on, on specific True, customers, but, but we've, but yeah, have but we've certain had a, customers. But we had a record quarter in federal, <laughs> right. in the U.S. federal in Q3, right. and uh, we're very pleased with the uh, federal business. Okay, so what have they tended to do? It you introduced the term ransomware. Ever since then, when I talk to law enforcement, they just tell me, "How could you not know about ransomware?" But frankly, most of our audience had not heard of it until you yeah. talked. This is still state of the art. Huh? This is what they still want. Definitely. One of every three malwares these days is ransomware because it's just worth money to the attackers. There's been reports that uh, they're on track to just collect ransom of a billion dollars in 2016. So it's a very fruitful means of attack, and they're targeting the regular user back at home, but also enterprises, uh, which is what we protect. Now, when I looked at, what, at the quarter, I was something that, that dawned on me that I realized I thought was not the case. You actually point blank say that cloud cannot... is. I don't want to say that you say it's not secure, but you say it's additional security risk cloud. A lot of people come on here and tell us not to worry about cloud security. That's not true, is it? Because the cloud basically expands the, expands the attack surface. Uh, it's, it's much harder to set up 100 servers when you have to buy the 100 uh, hardware pieces versus set them up at a flick of a switch on a, on a cloud provider. So what we do is we, we're really securing the plumbing uh, behind the, the cloud services, the servers, the applications, everything that's expanding into the cloud, and very much work with hybrid enterprises. Now, the, but there does seem to be a differentiation now in the cybersecurity companies. At one point, it was kind of like cybersecurity, well, I, I, that's hot. It became this email and getting into the email. 
Was that just because of the scandals we heard, or is it just is it the most crackable? Why is why is, why do we know that the company, the two companies that are involved in just email, have really had much stronger results than all the other companies in the segment? Because again, email is a great way to get in. We talk about the attacker has to get in and then set a footprint. The, the companies that are trying to prevent the phishing attacks right. are, are definitely seeing demand. We're on the other side of that. We're assuming okay, there'll be an infection. How do we prevent the, them to propagate them? But we actually work very well with those companies. Okay, uh, for state, we, we're always trying to figure out who's doing it. Um, could you just give me a, a, a state actor? We hear Russia, we hear China. How often is a state act, actor versus just plain old bad guy? A lot of it is plain old bad guy when, right. it, when it's after uh, monetary reasons. I, I think the, the, the well uh, famous uh, things had to do with nation states. Cyborg, fortunately, is not in the business of, uh, of attributing, but we're seeing that customers are, are worried about all of the above and they brief their boards about all of the above. Okay, um, with a new administration in the United States, do you think there'll be a new approach to cyber, cyber warfare? Well, we, we've seen both candidates talk about the, the needs for cybersecurity, but the president-elect definitely emphasized the need to revamp cybersecurity in the federal government. And More so business for cyber. Arc. Potentially. We think it's a green field just like it yeah, was before, and, and uh, we're going after it. Well, you said you're going to have good core. You said business is good and business is better than that. That's Udi Makati. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of CyberArk Software. You know this has been our favorite. Mad Money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.